Yo, 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 this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. Today, we're going to answer a question. Today, we're going to deal with two questions that were posted on the last video. One was dipped in hate. If this is your first time here, what we do is we talk about economic empowerment and how to start a business. Be sure to go to the front of the channel and check out the multitude of playlists to get that free 99 on how to start a business. We're going to address the hate first. There was someone that was like, rich, rich by whose definition? And this is a hater. And I've been doing YouTube for 10 years. And this is how it starts off. Because it was like, who's by whose definition? Ha ha, joke, joke. You're, you know, essentially, you can't have what you hate. And this is one of the reasons that there are so many people who are poor because they hate on people who have money because it makes them feel better to hate, to put out a snarky comment, to say something slick. But from a mental standpoint, that doesn't really help that person achieve any level of wealth or greatness because their subconscious mind is not going to allow them to move forward because they've told their subconscious mind that they hate that type of stuff. So the subconscious mind ain't going to let them have it. I look, and this is why people who win the lottery typically are broke within five years, regardless of the amount of money they win, because their subconscious mind, they're not predicated for wealth. They're not set up to hold money. So they're going to do everything they can to get rid of that money, make bad investments, give the money to family members and so on and so forth. So here's a lesson to the hater. If you want to be rich, don't hate rich people. All right. So now let's get into the second question, which was a good question. When do you know that you're rich? And there's levels to this because there are many people, you have to be an NBA player, NFL player, major league ba baseball player with a multi-million dollar contract to be considered rich. That's not true. If you make fifteen dollars to $25,000 a month, you're rich. There's a big difference between being rich and being wealthy. When you're rich, you work for your money. NFL players, they work for their money. NBA players, they work for their money. Major League Baseball players, they work for their money. Soccer players, they work for their money. They just have a, a very large paycheck, but they're still working for their money. When you're wealthy, your money works for you. So this is one of the reasons that NFL players, uh, Major League Baseball players, and the NBA players go broke after retirement because they haven't been working on wealth development skills. Now, the first level is to be rich and getting rich enables you to be wealthy. Like, look below, look at all of these houses. These are multi-million dollar houses around the corner from where I live. And these folks, some are rich and some are wealthy. And this is the key because once you get rich, you should develop a wealth mindset. And typically, let's take the NFL player. NFL player comes out of school. You know, a year ago, he was living in the dorm with two or three other dudes. Now he's got a 10, 20, $30 million contract. And he's not used to that. He's not accustomed to that. You see that house right there? That's a mansion on acres right there. That person's wealthy because typically, you know, I, I have folks who are arguing with me. I've done a lot of research around the neighborhood. Many of these houses are paid off. They were paid for before the owner moved in. And these are the wealthy folks, because when you look at the income levels. And let's take the, the 15 million millionaires. Now, that's right there. That house is probably four the $5 million, that pool is ginormous. And they're on an estate surrounded by other estates. There's a big difference between being rich 
which is what most of the millionaires are. I think there's like 15 million millionaires in the United States and 20, 22 millionaires around the world. And the 80 to 90% of the millionaires in the United States have a net worth of 1.5 million up to 5 million. That's where most of these people lie. Now, the people who have net worths of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million, they have their assets working for them. Like, take all of these, like, um, the guy who produces the Kardashian show. Uh, he's a radio disc jockey. Ryan Seacrest. Ryan Seacrest is wealthy. Why? Because Ryan Seacrest has assets that produce income. And that's why he has a net worth of, let me see. I think Ryan Seacrest's net worth is something like 300, 400 million. Now, when you get to that level, you're wealthy. And this is more money than the average baseball player, NFL player. This is way more money. Because these, you know, once you get wealthy, it's a different level and a lot of folks can get rich all you got to do is make 15 to twenty five thousand dollars a month or more and you're rich now what is rich rich is when normal people bills don't affect you when you're rich you can pay your mortgage easily when you're rich you can buy your car out cash you can um, do so many things when you're rich. Essentially, rich provides a level of comfort. According to Forbes, hold on, last year, Seacrest made $71.5 million in income from all his separate endeavors. His net worth is estimated between 410 and 430 million. That's wealth. So once again, you know, you could you uh, football players nba players actors rappers they're rich but they're working for their money so the difference between being rich and being wealthy is the wealthy people have money working for them they have assets they have real estate they have properties and this is the danger of being rich because when i said i was rich the other day and someone wanted to make a little joke because this this is one of the things. I've been doing this for 10 years and you can go through the videos and see that my life got better, better and better. It's documented fact. So you got some Yahoo who watches one video who wants to make a slick comment. You can't observe or estimate me, dude, because you don't have the breath of knowledge and this is one of the things when i meet other rich people or well-to-do people we connect we talk because we're speaking the same language and this is one of the things that you've got to do if you want to stop being poor you've got to change how you think about money money is a tool money is just a mere tool it is not power it is not it's a tool and based upon how you use this tool will determine if you leave the ranks of being rich. Cause there's, there's many people who enter the ranks of being rich every year. And there are many people who fall out of the ranks because their income source, like the NB, the NFL player, you know, I think the average time in the NFL is three years. So after they stop playing and they stop getting those big checks, and they go back to normal life for a lot of them it's hard because they went from college to the pros and that's all they know and they don't know about having a budget like omni with a hellcat he he keeps mentioning you know i had this endless pool of money now i got a budget and stuff you know it, it's once again this is the mindset this is how people fall out of the ranks of being rich if Omni did not have the YouTube channel and this happened, he would be poor as a church mouse right now. So to his credit, he had something else going on that could pull in six figures a month. Not a lot of people can do that. So kudos to him for setting that up. But your first goal is to get rich 
so you can set the stage for you to become wealthy. That's the trick. And once you get rich, which is fifteen, twenty five thousand dollars per month, this gives you the income to seriously invest in making your money make you money. You can't do this on regular people income that that's just not going to work. One of the biggest issues that people have, and this is why today I deleted the B school for hustlers and I deleted the financial channel because I'm getting ready to start it all over and do it totally differently. Um, most personal finance is geared for poor people because that's the largest pocket of people that you can bring into your audience. And one of the reasons that most of the advice, like you'll see questions like, hey, I got a thousand dollars. I want to be an investor, man. The truth is a thousand dollars invested. It's not going to do much for you. I, I did the math. Like if you took a thousand dollars and put it in this investment and you let it sit for 40 years, it'll turn into twenty five thousand dollars. 40 years. If you went out and created a service based business and made $3,000 a month, that's $36,000 in one year. And let's take, let's say you just kept it simple. You, you worked a job because a lot of people do this and you just made $36,000 times 40. That's one point five million dollars. So the biggest investment, because this is what I tell people, you got a thousand dollars, you got ten thousand dollars, you got fifteen thousand dollars. Those that type of money doesn't really create a great return without decades of exposure. So your best investment, if you do want to get rich, is to start a business. Because it's going to take you decades to get rich. And remember, getting rich is just the starting point. Getting rich is just the doorway to getting wealthy. So let's say you're 25, you play the 401k game, you go, you work your way up to like an income of 90,000, you're investing in the stock market, you're doing this stuff. And by the time you're 55, you got like a million dollars in assets. You're rich now. But it took you three decades to get there. And once again, getting rich is the beginning of getting wealthy. That is the beginning. Let's say you got a guy who makes one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. No, let's go ahead and say two fifty. This guy makes two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. And you got Farmer Brown who owns 100 acres and Farmer Brown has 10 rental houses. Who's wealthier? The guy who makes 250 or Farmer Brown. And Farmer Brown rents out each one of these houses for 1500 bucks. 1500 times 10 is 15,000 times 12 is 180,000. Even though this guy who makes $250, $250,000, which is $70,000 more than what Farmer Brown brings in, guess what? Farmer Brown can be on vacation and his money still comes in. This guy, he, he, he got to go to work every day. Unless he takes a vacation day, he, he ain't getting that two fifty. dollars So on paper and factually, Farmer Brown who only brings in $180,000 a year passive income is richer than the guy who makes 250. Farmer Brown is actually wealthy. Because see, once again, the goal is to go from being rich to wealthy. Many of the people who own these homes are wealthy. Some people have uh, jobs that pay a million, two, three, four million a year. And that's risky because, you know, once again, like if I won like five hundred million dollars in the lottery, I already know what I would do with it. I wouldn't even have to think about it. I would put together me a real estate team, uh, attorney and a CPA, and I would go out 
and buy real estate. I would spend all of the money on real estate. Probably take me a year or two to spend it all. I would probably buy a hundred um, single family homes or, you know, I would split it between single family homes and apartment complexes because I would transfer that 500 million into wealth producing assets. And that's how you get wealthy because if I ever won the lottery and I don't think I will ever win the lottery since I don't play the lottery, I would never go broke because I, I, I'm already rich. I already make good money. I have no problem paying my bills. I, I pay all my bills out of 7% of my income. So I'm, in, I'm way ahead of the average person. But if you want to go get wealthy, you must become rich first. Typically, that's how it works. Some people get wealthy through inheritance or, you know, some people are smart with their lottery winnings. Some of these NBA, NFL players are really smart with their money because you see these articles. A lot of these guys know that their their time in the, the pros is going to be short. And you got a lot of these guys who are living on 50, 60,000 when they're making a million or two a year because they know it's not going to last. So kudos to those guys because more and more of these guys are getting smarter and smarter and smarter. Like Shaq, when he played, he didn't spend his NBA money. He spent his endorsement money and invested his NBA money. And that's why Shaq is wealthy. So the whole game is delay gratification strategy and also the first time that i became rich and i didn't get rich in the storage well i kind of sort of got rich in the storage auction business but i should say my second time becoming rich is when i made 1.5 million dollars my third year selling my book and selling courses at that point i became rich at that point i was living in an apartment man at that point, my everything I had was paid for. I didn't have no credit card debt. I didn't have no car payments. I think my monthly nut was like 2400 $2, bucks a month is what it cost me to live. And I had that kind of loot coming in. And here's another thing. When you're rich, you got to live below your income. One of the most disastrous things that you can do is to live at the top of your income. That's stupid. That's going to put you in a very bad situation. That's going to put you in dire straits because this is one of the reasons I live so far below my income. You know, and a lot of people who are poking holes like you ain't rich because you don't have a Hellcat. You ain't rich because you don't have a Lambo. You know, honestly, I don't want a Hellcat. I know this may be controversial, but I think the cars are kind of ugly. I just don't like the design. I don't like the shape. I just don't. And you, this is one of the things you hear with people. Well, you get a Hellcat, you get all this power for less money. One of the things that I have developed is if I want something, I create enough income where I can get it. A lot of these people driving these Hellcats and claiming all this power because it's cheaper than buying a Lambo or a Ferrari or a Porsche. I want you to, uh, your pockets are dictating your wants. Your wants should dictate your pockets. You should up your means to get what you want out of life versus settling. And, you know, I live exactly how I want. And uh, another thing, that I had before I had the money was I had wealth and time. I could do whatever I wanted with my time whenever I wanted. So that third year when I was making all that money from my selling my books, I was retired for about three years. I went to the bank during the middle of the day. I would eat at certain places during off peak hours. I would never go shopping on Saturdays with everyone else because I didn't have to. I can go shopping Monday through Friday if I wanted to. And that's something else, too. And this is a part of getting rich is you want to control your time. 
Because if you can't control your time, you don't have time to get rich. You don't have the time to make that money. You don't have the time to crank it up. You just don't have the time. So one of the things that I want to impress upon you guys is your first goal is to get rich and is to free yourself from a nine to five. Nine to five is a good building block. I, I used them to build myself so I could get my own business, I'm not hating on the job. But regardless of how hard you work or how successful you are for the company, you're only going to make X amount of dollars unless you're in sales. And even with sales, the commissions are usually puny in today's world. You'll get 4%, 5%. When I was in outside sales, and I will put this in, I was 100% commission. We didn't get a draw. Uh, we didn't get insurance benefits. We had to get all of that our own, but we got 50% of the net. So we did a $250,000 deal and the profit was 100,000, we got 50. That's a real sales job, but you gotta make sales. You gotta work. You gotta put out the effort to make that kind of money. And that's why I think commission sales because every business owner is in commission sales. If you don't work, you don't produce results, you don't get paid. So once again, set yourself up where you could put yourself in the position to get rich. And then once you get rich, then you get wealthy. And this is one of the big mistakes a lot of people who are rich do. They spend all their money. They're living at the top of their income. They, they got all of these cars. And also, when you're making six figures and you have a car note that's just stupid. I mean, you're making six figures. You should have the ability to save up and pay cash for your car once you cross six figures. Average person ain't driving a Lambo, ain't driving a Bentley. Most cars you can get for 20 some to 30 some thousand dollars. You can save that up, player. So if you're making six figures and you got a car note, that's just dumb. You making six figures, you got credit card debt, that's just dumb. Even if you are a millionaire, you need a budget. You need to manage your money properly or your money's gonna manage you. It's just that simple. There is no middle ground with this. You manage your money well or your money's gonna manage you. Your money is gonna make a clown of you. Your money's gonna make a fool of you because you or just out here spending like you on crack. So that's all I got for you guys today. Be sure to subscribe and more importantly, watch the videos. Watch the videos, get the free 99, and I will see you guys in the next episode.